Hi everyone, Chef Mike Benninger here. Today we're gonna to make one of my favorite winter classics, the whole slow roasted shoulder of pork. And the prep and cooking could not be easier. For a cut like this, I like to keep my seasoning very simple. Salt, fresh cracked pepper, and some Chef Mike barbecue seasoning. That's all it really needs. The hardest and most challenging part of this entire process, but also the most important part, is to debone and butterfly cut the pork shoulder. I do this because number one, I like having the bone out of the way. It makes for easier carving later. But number two, and more importantly, it lets me season the inside of the roast, something I could not do if I didn't have it butterfly cut. If you do not want to do this, pay your butcher to do it. Most of them will do it for free anyway. They'll charge you for the cost of the bone, but most of them will do it for nothing. If they won't do it for nothing, I might reconsider where you're buying your pork. After you butterfly cut the roast or had your butcher do it, I might take a couple of minutes to feel around inside and make sure there's no bones or pieces of cartilage or chips that have been missed. Those would be a very unpleasant surprise to bite into with your pulled pork sandwich. When I say a lot of seasoning, I mean a lot of seasoning. This roast is about 16 or 17 pounds. By the time it's all said and done, we'll probably end up using about quarter cup of kosher salt and a quarter cup of the Chef Mike barbecue seasoning as well as several tablespoons of fresh cracked pepper. You want to season aggressively at the beginning because this is when you actually have the most impact upon this. And it's a large hunk of meat. You won't go wrong seasoning a little bit more than you might think. In fact, that's the difference between most home cooks and most restaurants is how much we restaurant folks actually season our food. When I do a whole pork shoulder, I like to score the skin and then tie the whole roast back into shape. Scoring has three functions. First one is to give you that really cool diamond shaped pattern when it cooks. But what it also does is it allows for the fat to drain away. And that means you get that lovely crackling and crackling tastes fabulous. Scoring is pretty easy though. I use an X-Acto knife. You can buy one at the dollar store, whatever you want. You want a nice clean, sharp blade. You want to do parallel lines approximately one centimeter apart. You want to go through the top layer of skin and mostly through the fat layer, but not any lower than that. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's pretty easy to do. Tying's pretty simple, actually. It's only five or six strings across the short edge and three or four across the long edge. You want to keep them fairly snug and it holds a lovely rectangular shape for the roast. Quick note on butcher's twine. Butcher's twine is not household string. It's far stronger, it's woven differently, it doesn't twist, and it's far better for doing stuff like this. If you know anybody that owns a butcher shop or works at a large meat store, they might be able to order your roll, or eating any kitchen supply store might do it as well. It might cost you 25 bucks, but trust me, it's far superior than anything else you'd possibly want to use, and well worth the money. So now it's finally time to go to the oven. I like to use a rack in a large pan. The rack just makes it easier to get out of the pan a bit later. And of course, there's our bone. We're gonna start the whole thing off putting our skin side up. That gives us a place where we can season it a bit more because remember, large roast requires seasoning. After that season, we're gonna rub that in and then flip it over and do the top again and rub that in as well. As a general rule of thumb for a cut this large, I think about one hour per pound of raw roast is where I would like to start. And that means in a case like mine, you have to start the night before. So that right now is 10 o'clock at night with my, with my oven's gonna be set somewhere around 275. At the lower end, my oven runs a little bit cold. And that means the next morning, I'll have had six hours in before I take my first look at it. After your shoulder has been in the oven for about six hours the next morning, not only will your house smell awesome, but when you pull the tray out, you'll notice that the roast has shrunk a little bit. And this is when the strings have done their job, and this is where you want to cut them off. Because after all, you don't want to cut them off later and have them pull any of that spectacular crackling away. You want to save all that for yourself. For me, one of the greatest parts of this dish is how little work it actually is once the initial setup is done. This goes back in the oven for 12 hours, and it just sits there and does its thing. You don't have to do anything at all, no basting, no touching. And 12 hours later, it's finished. I like to finish it off by just turning the oven off for the last hour or so, letting it sit, and then bringing it out, plattering it up. 
pork shoulder rest of this size will easily feed 12, 14, or 15 people. All he needs a couple of dozen crusty rolls, some barbecue sauce, some cold beer and coleslaw, and you're good to go. Spectacular way to feed a large crowd, cheap, affordable, and easy. I know that once you've made a large roast like this, like me, you'll be hooked. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at chefmike.ca or telephone or email, whichever you prefer.